this is Kohlberg's theory of moral development. Um, my name is Catherine Schmidt. I'll be directing this lesson today. Um, Lawrence Kohlberg was a psychologist working in the 1960s and the 1970s, a little bit in the 19, late 1950s. Uh, he developed what is known as the theory of moral development in children. Uh, he did it based off of John Vygotsky's work uh, in moral development. Uh, John Vygotsky was a Swiss psychologist. Lawrence Kohlberg is an American psychologist. Uh, he was he did his undergrad and his graduate at the University of Chicago, and that's where he really developed this theory and it became extremely popular. Uh, he theorized that moral development occurs in a series of six stages that are classified into three different levels. And it is a series, so therefore you start at the level one, first stage, and then you're going to work your way up to level six. Uh, certain people stop at certain levels, and they're never going to fully develop into the later levels. And we'll get into it, and you'll see why it makes a little bit more sense. What's really cool about how Lawrence Kohlberg did his theory is he did it based off of a story, and then he asked you questions about it. And the story before is the Heinz Dilemma. And you can see it here on your screen. Uh, what it boils down to is that a woman is dying from cancer, and it was discovered that there's this one single drug that will be able to save her and everybody else that has the same disease that she does. The man, the druggist, who discovered the cure, in this case it's radium, only paid $200 for it, but he's charging $2,000 for a small dose of it. So he's trying to make a profit. Well, the sick woman has a husband named Hans, Heinz, who going to do everything he can to try to save his wife, and he's only able to get together a thousand dollars. Now granted that's eight hundred dollars more than what it costs for the radium, but definitely it's only half of what the drug is really wanted. So he offered to make a deal. Uh, let me save my wife and get this drug from you. You can have what I have now and we'll pay the rest later. But the druggist said, no, I discovered it. I'm going to make money from it. So, Heinz got desperate and broke into the man's laboratory and stole the drug for his wife. Now, the questions that we begin to ask are, should Heinz have broken into the laboratory to steal the drug for his wife? Why or why not? So, let's move into the first, first level is pre-conventional. So, we have the first stage, and this is called obedience and punishment. Uh, you're going to see this most often in young children. This is the first stage in our moral development. But some of the thinking that goes along with it is something that you will see in us. And the question that is always asked of yourself in this stage is, how can I avoid punishment? What do I need to do that, to, get my, to get what I want but to avoid punishment? So um, basically, all the view is that rules are fixed and must be obeyed to avoid punishment. So the key word that you're going to see here is obedience. You're going to. This is why young children obey their parents because they know what hap They see what happens when they do something wrong, and then they're punished for it, and they'll do everything they can to avoid it. This is why young children will lie, not understanding that it's a lie. They're lying because they don't want to get in trouble. They don't understand yet. Um, so going back to the Heinz dilemma, at this stage. The reasoning behind why he should not steal the drug should be that because stealing is against law, and if he steals and he's caught, he could go to jail, and that makes him a bad person. And that is what stage one thinkers would think, and this is often what you see in young children. What can I do to not get in trouble? Uh, at stage two, this is called individualism and, exchange, individualism and exchange. This is where children begin to have a cognizant, uh, become cognizant of other people. They're aware that there are other people in the world who have different views. They're, and therefore, it's very much in their own self self interest. It's like, what's in it for me? What can we do, or what can we exchange so that I get what I want? It's almost selfish in a way. Um, so you have you have a goal at this stage, and children will act in whatever manner is best, and they won't think about the repercussions of it. They won't think of how everybody views them. All they're going to see is they're going to see 
I want that. How can I get that? So our keyword here is definitely self-interest. So in the Heinz dilemma, the argument could be made that Heinz should steal the drug because he will be happier if his wife survives, even if that means he goes to jail. Now, in contrast, and I don't have this on our screen, maybe he shouldn't steal the drug because his life will be more miserable if he's in jail. And maybe that is mi more miserable than if his wife were to die. Both of those arguments can be made at the stage two uh, using individualism and exchange. Stage two, we're going into level two, and this is our conventional thinking. This is going to be the one that you're going to see a lot of, especially in adolescents and adults. At stage three, it's called colloquially the good boy or the good girl stage. Uh, this is where you become aware of what society's expectations are and what your reputation is, and so you let that expectation determine your actions. It determines how you're going to approach a problem because you do not want to be perceived as a bad person. This is going to be, um, this is where basically society will determine your behavior because you, because it benefits you to be a quote unquote good person. The key word here is conformity. We conform to society's norms. We conform to what, as a society, we have decided is good behavior. So, using that argument, Heinz should steal the drug because his wife expects it and wants him to be seen as a good husband. Society will see him as a good husband because he did whatever he had to do to save his wife. Leading out of this one, stage four. Law and order. This is very absolute. The law is black and white. There, It's all about maintaining the social order through focusing on rule following, doing your duty and, duty, and respecting authority. It's all about the good of society as a whole and how your actions impact it. So in this level of moral development, it doesn't matter what stealing the drug would accomplish. How you can do it because Stealing is prohibited by the law. It doesn't matter if it's for a good cause or not. Uh, moving out of stage four, we're going to level three. This is the post-conventional. So this gets a little bit more outside of normal everyday thinking. It's a little bit higher order. So the first one we're going to get into is called social contract. Us, um, at this stage, it's all about different views and opinions and how they all should be respected. Laws are considered social contracts. Now, a social contract is a theory in um, ethics that says that as individuals and as a society, we either agree verbally or tactically to say, I will give up certain rights in order to have a government or a magistrate protect other more important rights. So at this, at this level, the rights of an individual are compared against another one, and given a priority. At this level, your actions are supposed to be ones that do the greatest good for the greatest number of people. It's all about human rights, and that's our key word here. That's where, this is the level of thinking that you'll see a lot of activists in. These are the questions that they ask. This is the level of morality that they believe in. What we need to do to protect society as a whole and do the greatest good for as many people as we can. So this is mainly achieved through majority decision and compromise. This is the basis of our democratic government. Is we give we vote and some of us give up our rights to have what we want if the majority decision disagrees with us. So looking at Heinz's dilemma, uh, one version for why he should do it is Heinz should steal the drug because everybody has a right to choose life regardless of the laws. Yet in counter, Heinz shouldn't steal the drug because if he steals the drug, that means that other people with the same illness as his wife might not have access to it. And the question you would pose at this point is, is her life more, worth more than the lives of the hundreds or thousands that would be saved as well? Moving past stage five, we get into stage six. Now, this one is very abstract. This is called principled conscious, 
uh, conscience or the universal principles. This has very abstract reasoning. Um, it's using universally ethical principles. So when it comes to laws of a society, laws are only valid as long as they are committed to and grounded in justice. Now, at this level of thinking, it it could be argued that there is a moral obligation to disobey any law that is deemed unjust. Now, we've all had laws that we go, that's just not fair. But unfortunately, that was the law, and it took activism to change it. Now, something like something very similar to that that's going on right now is gay rights, marriage equality. Is their right to marry a inalienable right? Is it unjust on a moral level? So when we get here, this is something that Colbert found very hard, very difficult to identify in people who consistently operated at this level because it is so abstract and so high reasoning. But the key words that you're going to have at this stage is universal human ethics. Now at the Heinz dilemma, the argument could be, the argument that is made or the reasoning that is made is that Heinz should steal the drug because a human life more value than the property rights of someone else. All right, so I want you to think on a few things. How would you have acted in this scenario? Would you be like Han, Heinz? Would you have stolen the drug? What arguments would you have made to do that? Which, I want you to reflect personally on yourself. What stage do you believe that you operate in? Personally, I believe that I operate normally between um, the law and order and the social contract stages. Those are where I believe that I operate with consistently because I do believe in the laws and governments and that they should be followed. Yet, at the same time, I understand that there are certain rights of mine that I will lose just for the greatest good of the society. So I want you to think on that and then get back to me, all right? Have a wonderful night.